Very struggling LA Rams. Why do you got the Madden number 10? Yeah, I mean, I, I think some people could say, you know, they should drop out of the top 10. They've lost three in a row. But remember, uh, when they started that three-game losing streak, they were 7-1. and one. They were looking like perhaps the best team in the NFL. Um, and if you th- look at the teams that they've lost against, uh, you know, Tennessee Titans, Green Bay Packers, uh, the first loss, I'm kind of – I can't remember that first loss. But they, they've definitely faced some quality opponents. Now, I agree with what you guys were talking about with Stafford. I think it's very possible that he could be playing with some kind of injury – because uh, he, he does not really look like himself. However, let's not forget about some of those uh, years in Detroit. He definitely had some shaky moments. He definitely ha- threw his fair share of interceptions. Let's not make it seem like this guy was the perfect quarterback when he came here. And he also didn't play in a lot of high-pressure games, which the games are becoming more and more pressure-packed as we get uh, into December now. So uh, I think if – I agree with what you guys were saying. I think if he is seriously hurt, they need to think about bringing in John Wolford for a game or two, similar to what the Arizona Cardinals – uh, did have faith in your backup um, think that the rest of the team can play strong uh, you know alongside him and you know we saw a little bit of Wolford last year and he really wasn't that bad so um, they might need to consider something like that but I look for them to get back on track with with a win uh, this week yeah they they yeah, do play I mean, the, the, bring... the Jaguars so that's pretty easy right? yeah and you're you're yeah. seven and four so this would be a perfect time if you're going to start Wolford this week would be a perfect one before you go into Arizona next week with that big divisional game. And, you know, if the Cardinals find a way to, to, you know, if everybody on the Cardinals gets hurt this week and somehow they don't show up for the game and the bears pull one out <laughs> and you win this week against the Jaguars, that could be the the game that, you know, decides first place in the, in, in the NFC West. I like, it, it would make a ton of sense to go to Wolf Ward or maybe they're trying to get through that Cardinals game with Stafford because then you get the Seahawks and the Vikings before you get the Ravens. So maybe that's when they decide to rest Stafford for a couple of weeks before they play the Ravens and Niners to close out the season. Well, and then coming at, at number nine, you do have another struggling team in the Tennessee Titans. They've lost two in a row to the Houston Texans, and then the Patriots got throttled by the Patriots. Supots is paid, hey, Patriots. Yeah. Why are they at, why are they at, at number nine still? Well, I, I think it's a, it's very similar to the Rams. Yeah, they've lost two in a row. They've looked uh, pretty poor doing so, uh, especially that, you know, the tight, uh, excuse me, the Texans loss was, was really, I think, the biggest upset of the NFL season so far, uh, perhaps along with Jacksonville beating the Buffalo Bills. Um, but they're still in a good spot. That's the reason why I've still got them uh, in that pretty, in pretty high spot, still in the top 10 there. They're still in a good position uh, in the AFC. They can still get that number one seed. Um, really strange fact about that game against the Patriots. Yeah, they lost the game by 23 points, but they actually had two 100-yard rushers in this game, which is a very encouraging sign for Titans fans. Um, uh, Deontay Deontay Foreman and uh, the guy who had the long touchdown run there uh, both had over 100 yards in this game. Uh, So that's got to be encouraging, and it it gave them the freedom to go ahead and release Adrian Peterson. Apparently he's uh, in or talking with the Seattle Seahawks, which is really uh, interesting development. He has signed. Yep. Okay. Um, so obviously the run game is so important to this team. Tannehill has had some, you know, not great moments over the last couple of weeks. So he needs to get it together. Uh, I believe some of their receiving core is out right now. Um, but let's be honest. This is a team that's carried by its defense, uh, usually strong special teams as well. So they just need to not make mistakes. And uh, their schedule over the last six weeks uh, or uh, is, is, you know, they have a lot of winnable games there. So I definitely think that they can at least win the AFC South and still, like I said, in the mix for that top seed uh, for the AFC. So it's not all bad uh, for the Titans. Uh, no, I think you're being nice. It's all bad. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. AJ Brown, Julio Jones on the IR. Now your, your top wide receivers are Nick Westbrook, Akeen and Chester Rogers. Like I, it just does not bode well, especially with a guy like Ryan Tannehill, who is like what I said with Trevor Simeon. He's one of those guys who is really going to to rest his laurels on a strong run game. And with Derrick Henry being on IR too, I mean, look, injuries just killed the Titans' season. That's that's what happened here. They were going to be a Super Bowl caliber team <laughs> heading into the playoffs, and now they're nothing. And buggy, I mean, you can laugh all you want, but I mean, they were running rough shot over the league until Derrick Henry went down. You, you know who else oh. runs rough shot during the league during the regular season? The Baltimore Ravens. What have they done in the, the playoffs? Packers. True, very true. Go ahead, Graham. My bad, I didn't mean to cut you off. 
Oh, I was just going to say, um, I, I did find out the name of that. Uh, sorry, it was Dontrell Hilliard was the other uh, running back. So, I mean, that is an encouraging sign. He is no King Henry. Um, certainly, he's more of a speed back than, a, you know, power and speed like uh, uh, Derrick Henry is. But that, like I said, that's an encouraging sign. I would not flush this season down the toilet. They still have a very good defense. And I, I think they're going to need to win games, you know, 17 to 10 and things like that. Uh, show the toughness that they've really exhibited throughout the season, uh, taking on the personality of their head coach, uh, Mike Rabel. Yeah, I mean, the, look, the good thing for them is that they've got a, a pretty soft schedule uh, left. I mean, they've got the Jaguars, the Steelers, the Niners, the Dolphins, and the Texans. And, you know, with the exception of maybe that Steelers game, possibly the Niners game, the Niners are one of those teams you never know who's going to show up, but, but yeah. The, you know, all of those games, I mean, they're better than each one of they, they'll be the favorite in each one of their, their remaining games. So I, I just, I, I think that that will benefit them a little bit. I think they'll, you know, they'll still get in the playoffs. They'll probably still win the AFC South, but I just, I don't think that they are, um, they're really a threat to anybody come playoff time. Absolutely correct. But you know, who is a threat to come to uh, people during the playoffs? is the Dallas Cowboys, and that's exactly who they have coming in at number eight. This is a – for the last couple of weeks, Graham, your power rankings have been trending, and this is another trend. The Cowboys have lost two in a row, much like the Titans and much like the uh, Rams as well. Why do you got the Cowboys still at number eight, even after a tough loss on Thursday and then uh, shellacking by the Chiefs? Yeah, uh, I mean, two losses in a row, actually three of their last four. You know, you could take these three teams at the bottom of the top ten – put them in a, a jar or a bottle or something, shake them around and, and, and throw them out. And they'd be somewhere around the same. They, they've both been struggling over the past month or so, but they're still in a good position. They're, they're all leading their divisions, I believe. Let me make sure that, sorry, the Rams aren't leading their division, but they're still in a good playoff position. Uh, you know, Cowboys, uh, we talked about it, or you guys were talking about it earlier. Amari Cooper has not been around uh, the last couple of weeks. He's a big time receiver and he makes, uh, you know, the rest of that team go. You think about guys like C.D. Lamb, that two-headed monster at running back, uh, Pal Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. Um, you know, I like what I've seen out of the defense for the most part, especially Micah Parsons, but that secondary just got victimized against the Raiders, especially Anthony Brown, four pass interference calls. That was really the difference in the game. Wow. It seemed like they were going to still maybe pull it out. Uh, and I said to myself, like, if the Raiders lose this game, they really shouldn't lose. The Raiders, I thought, were the better team throughout the game. And um, the thing is, for the Cowboys, though, it's all, still all there in front of them. they got six games left. If they could find a way to win, say, four of them, uh, they're still in a pretty good position. They probably won't be close to that number one seed. But, um, yeah. you know, they'll still have a home playoff game. And let's be honest, they haven't won a lot of playoff games since uh, their last Super Bowl title in 1995. So I think Cowboy fans, uh, and also Buck yourself, uh, need to kind of temper the expectations as far as a Super Bowl appearance this season oh, this uh, because there is there is a bright future uh, there in Big D. You didn't have to separate Buck from, from Cowboys fan. Buck is a Cowboys fan. Oh, just, okay. He, yeah. just doesn't, he just doesn't like to admit it. He's really a – so he's a Chiefs, a Packers, a Cowboys. Uh, him and Drew have like 17 <laughs> Lions, teams that, that uh... they true for. It. Yeah, he loves the Detroit Lions. So it, it, it is what it is. But, look, the, the thing is is that much like I said, if the Saints find a way to win, they could be a 10 win team if the cowboys find a way to lose this week man look washington's playing better football the yep. giants are playing better football then they have the cardinals oh, yeah. on their schedule too they got the, the uh, washington twice they got the saints the giants the cardinals and the eagles left it's not a very easy back end of the schedule they could very easily find themselves at, at eight and nine or nine and eight this season yeah, and speaking of uh, yep. eight and nine and nine and eight, the Buffalo Bills are on track for that as well. After uh, losing to the Colts and then uh, beating the Saints, a very very bad Saints team right now. But that's who you have coming in at number seven, your Buffalo Bills, Homer. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know about all that. If you look at uh, power rankings through a lot of media outlets, they're going to have them somewhere in that top ten. Uh, I can't figure this team out, guys. Uh, you know, they they lose yeah. to Jacksonville about a month ago. They can't score a touchdown. Uh, they struggle against the Miami Dolphins as well. Um, I'm trying to think of some of their other performances. They blow out the Jets, um, and then they who lose doesn't? An, uh, well, exactly who doesn't? The Tennessee Titans don't. That's who don't. Uh, that was a <laughs> very surprising loss as well. Um, and then they lose uh, against the, the Colts by nearly four touchdowns. So uh, a nice bounce back against the Saints. 
Um, but I'm having a hard time figuring this team out. Josh Allen's making more of these risky plays that he was able to stay away from last year. Um, I still think the defense is, is, is a strong unit. However, they seem very prone to giving up a lot of yards uh, on, the, on the run, uh, in the run game. I still think their yeah. secondary is, is a, probably a top five secondary in the NFL. Jordan uh, Poyer and uh, Micah Hyde are just an excellent combo back there. But they're a little small up the middle uh, with guys like Matt Milano. Uh, so, and yeah. Edmonds is the other linebacker I'm thinking of. Um, I, I like what they've done at the running back position, uh, inserting a guy like Matt Breida, who was a healthy scratch for the first uh, several games of the season. He had a, gotten to the end zone a couple of times in, in recent weeks. He's more of a speed, dynamic, pass-catching type of back, whereas they had just kind of a thunder and lightning combination with uh, Singletary and Zach Moss. So uh, I like what he brings to it. I still think they have a really good receiving core. Uh, Dawson Knox is back in the fold. Um, they got to find a way to win this game on uh, Monday night against the Pats. And then they're right yeah. back where they need to be. And that's the thing, you know, you look at this Buffalo Bills team and you can very easily look at their schedule and say, well, you started out the season four and one. And since then you've gone loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. But two of those losses in that stretch, they really should have won. They obviously, they, they, they just fell asleep and forgot to play when they went to Jacksonville. That's just, I mean, look, that yep. that's just plain and simple and then that titans game uh, they they had the titans on the ropes and then derrick henry just ran wild all over them and that was the issue there yeah they need if, if they're going to beat new england they've got to find their run game they've got to find their run game in this game because that's how you beat new england a strong run game is how you beat new england and if they can find that this week if they can figure it out again and ride that train they can beat new england if not man it's good like buffalo bills fans are really going to start shaking their head and wearing paper bags to the stadium again because <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be tough to watch this team because this is a team that let's face it they were finally so pumped oh brady's gone we're going to win the yep. afc east we're the we're we're the, going to be the the franchise to watch now in the afc east and now all of a sudden mac jones comes out and you know here we are I want to see how Mac Jones performs against this this defense, though, too, because this defense yeah. is a very stout defense. Granted, they they did lose um, their their number one cornerback. Uh, his name's going to escape me here. Trey. Um, Tre'Davious White. Tre'Davious White. There you go. Um, and so, the I'm really excited for this game. Out of all the games this weekend, I think that this is the the game to watch. I think it's the number one. It's the best matchup. There's a lot of blah games this this sunday um yeah. a lot of games that that are very easy to predict um but this this game on monday night is going to be the game to watch i'm really excited to see i'm ex i'm actually excited to see how the patriots fare against a team like buffalo and if they beat them and if, if the patriots win this division man i'm just i'm gonna say it right now as much as i don't like the patriots fan base i'm rooting for patriots and tampa bay in the super bowl because i want to see belichick versus brady in the super bowl Wow, that that I, th I feel like we talked about that a couple of weeks ago with uh, Soup Boss, but that would be uh, potentially a very historic Super Bowl, a very highly rated Super Bowl, maybe the most highly rated Super Bowl of all time. Um, yeah. I do not want to see that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to see my Bills get back in there or just a, another team besides the Buccaneers and, and the Patriots would be great for me. But uh, as far as that run game going, uh, th they need Josh Allen to be involved in the running game yeah. as well because he's a real weapon when he uses his legs and his arms. He's just got to stay away from the just the stupid throws that he's been prone to, to make this season. I mean, if, if they, we do get that Super Bowl – Graham, what is your over under on jerseys in the stands that are half Patriots, half Buccaneers, Tom Brady jersey? <laughs> oh, geez, I don't know, a thousand. Yeah, oh, whatever. I, yeah, it's got to be. It'll be two. Is that, is that too low? It'll be two. It'd be oh. one of those. It'd be okay. one of those games where no matter what, New England fans would be happy. They would find a way to root for for both teams. It's just how New England fans are. Yeah, it's funny. I, you know, Peter King did a story about this early in the season, and and he talked to a lot of different people from the New England area, and some people were like that, and some people were, I'm going to cheer for him, and then as soon as he comes out, I want, I'm cheering for the sack. I want us to win. So there are right. Brady pe fans, and there are Patriots fans. We love you. We love what you did, but you're you're on the other team now, so we want to beat you. So well, let's face it, those ones guys. that he talked to, he only talked to like four people that were like that. So there's only four <laughs> real Patriots fans. Out there. <laughs> Well, a few different types, yeah. Speaking of real fans, Chiefs yeah. Kingdom has the greatest fan base in all of America, and that's oh, exactly 
who you have coming in at number six, Graham, and that's the Kansas City Chiefs. The winners are four in a row versus the Giants, Packers, Raiders, and Cowboys. And they're so good that their game got flexed to Sunday night football versus the Buccaneers. How good are the Kansas City uh, Chiefs right now? I believe it's the Denver Broncos. Or the Denver Broncos. Actually. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, it did get flexed in, thank God, because the other game was it was just a god-awful matchup. We already got kind of treated to Washington and Seattle on, on Monday night. That was just a brutal game. So I'm really glad that happened. Really like what I've seen out of the defense over the last month. Steve Spagnolo is in that kind of mid-season form. I don't know what it is with this guy, but he can't seem to get his guys or his schemes to work in the first two months of the season. But Chris Jones is looking like a world beater right now. They still have Tyron Matthew back there, and they're doing enough offensively, even though I still think they're lacking that game breaker on the uh, opposite side of the field, uh, opposite of uh, Tyreek Hill, I should say. Uh, Kelsey is still pr probably the best tight end in football. Um, and that's probably. enough. Uh, uh, okay, he's the best tight end there in football. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they have a decent running game. Um, that's been enough. They may not be the dynamic Kansas City Chiefs that we've seen over the past three seasons. But if you mix in a defense that's getting after the quarterback, especially that rush up the middle, forcing turnovers, uh, I think they're enough to be one of the top teams in the AFC. And and that's where they are right now at number six. So they're, they're right in the mix. So if you don't mind, let me talk a little bit about the Kansas City Chiefs. And oh God, a, couple, a couple years ago when they won the Super Bowl, I, I'm – I may or may not have my Super Bowl hat hat here on my head, but uh, we wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Buck, your camera's exactly. off. But uh, I thought you were rocking Royals. Okay. But the Kansas City Chiefs started out that season six and three. Guess what? They were just a couple weeks ago. They were six and three as well, right? So with that being mm. said, they are Super Bowl cal cal caliber team. On the other side of that ball, here in the last three or four weeks, they have finally moved Chris Jones back into the inside where where he belongs. And they tried with him with the stand up defensive end crap. That just da doesn't work. Put the man back in the middle where he belongs. And since then, the Kansas City's defense. Has has not Buck, sucked, Buck, and they've been they've actually been the best in the NFL. Buck, first of all, okay, first of all, when they won the Super Bowl, they were six and three, right? And you said they were six and three. That shows how little you're paying attention because they were never six and three. They started out the season <laughs> three and four. Six and four. Yes. My bad, Combs. My bad. Sorry. Twenty sixteen is not last year. My bad. Second of all, you ready for a hot take, Graham? Yes. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to lose four games. In their next five, oh my God. and they're going to finish the season nine and eight. You're such a whore. And the Denver Broncos, who have a much easier schedule down the stretch, are going to win this division, and they're going to win this game on Sunday night. Wow, that is that is scorching hot. I I don't know if I could get behind that. Exactly. I just don't trust Teddy. Um, steady Teddy you don't have to get doesn't in front want of to it. tackle anyone on the interceptions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm still yeah, talking about that. You don't that. have to get behind it. Just get in front yeah. of Just don't get in front of it because it'll run you okay. over when it happens. Because wow. look, they've that got the Chiefs, but then they get the Lions, Raiders, Chargers, and Chiefs again. So, you know, and then they got the Bengals mixed in there. And the Bengals, man, they, they're another team. You just don't know who's going to show up every damn week. But it, the, the, the I'm telling you right now, watch this happen. They're going to lose four out of their next five. And the wow. Denver Broncos are going to win four out of their next five, and they're going to win this division. Wow. That would be – I would be very shocked. Um, I, I don't know if I could get with that, but I love the take. Uh, I love the boldness of the take. Uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's totally 100% wrong, but one thing that has been bold are the New England Patriots, uh, winners of the six in a row here. Yeah. And, Graham, you have them coming in at number five. Soup Boss is you know not going to like this. Right you know no. how I know I'm right, Graham? Why? why? Buck, Buck said I was wrong. <laughs> There's the telltale side. Well, I did too, <laughs> so that might not look good for me. If it happens, uh, I'll wear that. Um, you know, a lot of people have Pats uh, a little bit higher, maybe in the top two or three. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm quite there yet. Um, Mac Jones is still a rookie. He's looked like a 10-year veteran. You know, give the guy the offensive rookie of the year now. Well, maybe Jamar Chase. <laughs> but a, a receiver almost never wins that that award. That's defensive rookie of the year. He, he You could give it to him now as well. Uh, anyways, what I'm trying to say is Mac Jones is looking great as, as a quarterback back there. Uh, Damian Harris, the run game, is looking uh, good as well. The, the, the defense is, is stout. Uh, and the the receiving options, uh, Jacoby Myers and the like, are kind of doing enough, getting open, finding separation. So 
Um, it, you, you said it, Combs. You know, I think Bills Nation were like, okay, AFC East title is ours for the next decade. And Mac Jones is like, well, actually, I have, I have plans for that. Um, I <laughs> yeah. won a lot at Alabama. I plan on winning a lot here as well. Um, he just seems like a perfect quarterback for that system and, and for that culture. Just kind of a real steady guy, never gets too high or low. So obviously this is the biggest game of his career. It's going to be in Buffalo. It's going to be cold, and that crowd is going to be live. So, um, Combs, you said it. it's going to be a great game, and uh, I look for Bills uh, Mafia and that defense to show up big time. It's a lot easier to win games, Graham, when your when your team in four games is only your defense is only giving up twenty six total points. They've given up six, seven, zero, and thirteen in their last four. I mean, that's it, it. It makes it a lot easier to win football games as a rookie in the NFL. You're and, right. But this this New England Patriots team is just. I mean, look, this is Bill Belichick's best defense. And, and you know, our our boy Wayne G said this before the season, and I laughed at him. He called it he before the season, and he had D, he said everything that's going on is what he said would go on, and he predicted this team to be eleven and six this year. Wow. And he is he is on point with it i laughed at him i laughed at him halfway through the season yeah I th- I th- but he, think we all he did. is absolutely yeah. positively correct and i look i still want to see where they're at over these next three weeks because these next three weeks for me are the telltale sign for the new england patriots sorry next four weeks because they've got a a bye week in they have there a late well. bye yeah but um it, it's going to be interesting for me to see how these teams are moving forward because if, if the if the New England Patriots find a way to win two out of these next three, or even all three of these next three games that they've got. Look, this watch out for this Patriots team because they're going to be really tough to beat. Well, they got Buffalo two of the next three. I think they got Indianapolis or some other teams yeah. used in uh, in between. So, um, I, I I wouldn't be surprised at all if if the Bills and, and Pats perhaps swept. Uh, not sweats split uh, their, their season series. And it's probably going to come down to the last week or two. Um, so definitely they've improved since last year, they went seven and nine last year, but you knew they were going to find a way to run it back. They had some under the radar free agent signings, guys like Kendrick Bourne, uh, Hunter Henry was, was one of the more splashy ones, but you know, Belichick's going to find a way to get that defense cranked up again. Uh, Matthew Judon, uh, potential defensive player of the year candidate, uh, 12 and a half sacks there yeah. uh, from his defensive end position. And that was a huge question mark before the season, right? How was Judon going to factor into this defense? You know, was he going to be able to perform? And look, they, they have clicked on all cylinders all season long. This defense has been good. And I, I just, man, it, this is a really interesting team to me. And I, I, God, I hate admitting it. I just, I, because I really do like, I really can't stand Patriots nation. I really die. Like, yeah. I, I spent the last 15 years in new England before I moved back home to Chicago. Graham, okay. yeah. and, and it's just been terrible to listen to them. Every damn sport they're winning championships and they just, they don't ever let you for in and, and I'd say probably about 65 to 70% of Pats fans couldn't name you a quarterback before drew Bledsoe. <laughs> and, and it drives Gosh. me insane drives me absolutely insane and they just shove it down your throat even when they're bad they're like we were supposed to have four seasons without the new england Patriots being good weren't we graham yeah well like, at least f- at least two god, <laughs> god. Yeah. Combs, i'm right there with you combs on the flip side of that tom brady was there for like 20 years so most of the patriots fans were like 10 years old when they started watching the game so tom brady was a rookie then now they're 30 ish makes sense right Shut up, Buck. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. So, uh, on the flip side of that coin, the Patriots do have the fifth hardest remaining schedule uh, for the rest of the season. The team that has the fourth hardest schedule of the remaining season moving forward, and that's who you do have coming in at number four. That's the Baltimore Ravens. They are fresh off a win over the Bills and the Browns, and then they play the Steelers, Browns, Packers, Bengals, Rams, Steelers to end out the season. Do you have faith in the Baltimore Ravens to maintain that number one seed in the AFC going into the playoffs? I'm not sure. It's It's been really weird. Lamar Jackson's had such a strange season. He's up to 13 interceptions. He Because he's four, trash. Uh, oh, in that stop it. Sunday night game against the Browns. Um, he has looked pretty horrible at times this season, but this team has a strange way of pulling out uh, games that they have no business winning. Uh, the, the, 
the game against the Bears a couple weeks ago when they had Tyler Huntley in uh, definitely strikes a chord. Uh, you think about the game against the Indianapolis Colts. They were down uh, 16 points in the fourth quarter or 14 points or something like that. Uh, also, the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, the, I believe it was the second uh, Sunday night game of the season, uh, they were down a couple touchdowns uh, in the second half of that game as well. This team just has a tendency to find a way to win. And I, while I do think they'll probably drop at least a couple more games, I, I do think that they have that in them. And it wouldn't surprise me to see them uh, be the number one seed in the AFC at the end Look, of the season. Lamar Jackson, who Buck likes to call trash, has been sacked 30 times through the first 10 games of this season. And? And I think that is taking a toll on them. He's also got 400 more yards than the next leading rusher on the team. Wow. So, yeah, he's got 700 plus yards, and then I think the next closest doesn't even have 400. Uh, so, Freeman, it, maybe. It, yeah. yeah. It, and so, it, this team is so one dimensional that I think that, you know, going down the stretch here, you're playing up against some really good defenses. You got to go to Pittsburgh. You got to play at Cleveland. You got to play the Packers, Bengals, Rams, and Steelers again. Hmm. I like, I, I, I really think that this team could find a way to only be nine and eight or 10 and seven at the end of the season. Like the, I mean, that is a rough stretch of games, It is, you know? And so I, I don't like their schedule moving forward. I don't think they hang on to the number one spot. I actually, it would not surprise me at all. Not surprise me at all. If they just completely lose their minds and lose their skirt on this one and end up at eight and nine, don't wow. win another game this season. So are they eight and three now? Eight and four, I believe. Eight, eight and three. three. Yep. Eight and three. So six games remaining. Even if they go three and three, that's a, that's eleven and six. Um, there are definitely some tough games in there. I I think they find a way to win four of them, uh, and okay. finish finish twelve and five. Um, I, I I don't know what it is, but I have faith in this team. Um, and and they've shown an ability to throw the ball down the field at times this year. You know, you think about guys like Mark Andrews. Uh, you know, Hollywood Brown, they, uh, Devin Duvernay is another guy who's definitely got some wheels. They've got some weapons, uh, going down the field. They just, uh, they choose to run it, uh, you know, over 50% of the time, which is a more of a throwback style. But when Jackson's in the mix there, you don't know if he's going to hand it off or run it himself. Or sometimes he hand, he does the fake handoff, looks like he's going to run and then he ends up throwing. So they're, they're pretty multidimensional yeah. that way. Um, and, and I trust John Harbaugh. That's the other part of this, uh, there's something about this guy. He, he always tries to find a way to win. He's got this whiny, oh, oh, were we outside? He always has this kind of whiny uh, look <laughs> on his it. face every time there's a penalty. Never uh, trust a Harbaugh. Is really annoying, <laughs> but uh, maybe it's their year, guys. Michigan beat Ohio State for the first time in like a, what is it, a century, a decade, something like that. So yeah, maybe it's lose their Ravens Iowa and find their way out of the damn college football playoff. <laughs> That would be so Michigan. Yeah, that's funny. So many people are upset in the chat that the Baltimore Ravens are number four. Many people are saying four is way too high. Six through nine-ish are they saying where they should be at. What are you saying to those haters, Graham? Well, I'm saying that they're eight and three. They're the number one seed in the AFC. And facts. they're facts. They, that is facts. And they control their own destiny. So Lamar Jackson needs to take that four interception uh, game against the Browns and just throw it away, uh, throw it away like he should have done so, some of those footballs that ended up in the hands of the Browns <laughs> receivers uh, and, and just try to find a way to be better over the last six games of the season, uh, you know, continue to, to pound the ball. Uh, so that's the main reason I have them there. I, I like that what I've seen out of the defense at times, uh, been, been able to force some turnovers and, and they control their own destiny. So that's got to fire them up. Uh, I understand some people would like to have them lower, Graham, but those teams Graham. I have lower are all on w losing streaks right now. Don't don't be nice to our listeners. Tell them. Say, if you don't like my rankings, make your own rankings. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and we would love to have you on, too. Rankings. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. so, so speaking of making your own rankings here, for whatever sure. reason, you have the Green Bay Packers coming in at number three. We have two other teams left out there. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I, I think they're too low. Why you have them at, okay. at number three? Uh, they, I mean, they, they suffered a bit of a setback a couple weeks ago, that tough game 
uh, against the Minnesota Vikings. It seems like Darnell Savage had the interception in overtime. Couldn't quite come up with it. He trapped the ball against the, uh, the turf there. Uh, Captain Kirk was able to find a way uh, for the Vikings to win that ball game. Uh, nice b- bounce back game for them against the Rams. I like what the, the defense is doing. Uh, Joe Barry has his unit playing at a, you know, at a really high level right now. Aaron Rodgers has things going. They have two good running backs. There's a lot to like with this team. I just like the teams uh, that I have ahead of them just a little bit more. Which uh, the team that you have ahead of them are the Bucks at number two and the Cardinals at number one. Um, I don't know why, but why are the Cardinals at number what one? Do you, mean? you don't know why. Because the Cardinals okay, well, suck. The, <laughs> the Cardinals have the best record in the NFL. I don't care. They're, they're nine and two. They're coming off a really good couple of wins with Colt McCoy. He completed over 80% of his throws. Say, in the say two that one wins. more time. Uh, coming off two good wins with who? Colt McCoy. Which is a <laughs> yes, better but... quarterback than Kyler Murray, right? Thank you. <laughs> Carry on. Oh, that's it. Cubs is God. Yeah. He's God. <laughs> I, I I hate him. I hate him. This team was 8-0 when Kyler Murray went down. Sorry, 8-1 when Kyler Murray went 8-1. down. They are 9-2 now with, with, with Colt McCoy. And now they've got Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins both coming back. And they're playing the How Bears. are they not the best team? Yeah. <laughs> It, it took me a while to get on this train, Combs, but I'm I'm on it. I, I'm up there front with the engineer. Uh, you know, I'm scooping some coal into the fire. Uh, you know, let's let's go with this. You know, I took my lumps as far as not having them there, but I've got them there. I told and, you. And they're going to stay there as long as they keep winning. Uh, you know, the reason they have them at, at number one buck is is because they have the best record. Well, now, some teams might, some people might want to have the Bucks or a Packers or some other team ahead of them there. But I, yeah. you are what your what your record says you are, as the big tuna, uh, Bill Parcell said. So <laughs> they have the best record; they're the best team. Well, and now, on the flip yeah, side of that, Combs, hang on. On the flip side of that, every time Graham puts a team at number one, the last six weeks, that team's losing. Pick the Chicago Bears no. versus the Arizona Cardinals this week, guys. Book Do it. it. <laughs> no, he had the Cardinals at one last week, and they won. No, no, no. Oh, he that's... no. You had the uh, Packers a couple weeks ago, right? No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. Um, let oh, me see. Ugh, I was last gone. Week was Cardinals. Cardinals. It, it, no, yeah. I did have Cardinals. Yeah, okay. I was with Combs and Soup Boss. Yeah, but yeah. they were uh, what? Were the Cardinals on a bye week? So, so they couldn't have lost. So there you go. Yeah, that's right. They still didn't lose. Well, I mean, a couple weeks ago, I had Titans at number one. Look what's happened to them yeah. since. So, well, yeah, but I mean, look, yeah, they've also been riddled with injury. I know. You didn't I, know I, that Julio Jones and and you know, you know, give yourself some credit here, Graham. Your 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 rankings were really good, with the exception of had, you had the Bears at twenty eight when they should have been at thirty two. Um, actually, probably about thirty six. And so <laughs> I I just 